Types of chemical reactions. We're going to look in this presentation about, and we're going to look at synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions. And then later, and we'll get into some more detail, not in this presentation, um, about single displacement and double displacement reactions. So a synthesis reaction is essentially the joining together of two species, um, two particles, if you want to think of them like that, but definitely two terms in the equation coming together to form one term in the equation. So for example, if we had sodium metal and chlorine gas, they're going to come together and form sodium chloride. That would be a synthesis reaction. We have, in this case, two reactants forming one product. Um, that's what we're going to see this type of combination putting together synthesizing of things together into products that's going to be a synthesis reaction so if we had magnesium and oxygen and again we know magnesium is metal so it's going to be a solid oxygen is going to be a gas at room temperature so this is going to be a synthesis reaction so you don't have to know too much about what sort of products are going to be produced because in a synthesis reaction as long as you know it's going to be a synthesis reaction you just put them together so you have to have magnesium and we have to have oxygen because that's all there is on the left so we're putting those guys together um, and we have these charges we can cross over and then we have our two and our two and then because that's a shortcut we can reduce them and we end up with our magnesium oxide which we know is an ionic compound because it's a metal and a non-metal we could check the electronegativity and the properties to be sure but i'm willing to bet it is going to be a solid at room temperature then again we want to make sure that this is a balanced chemical equation so we can sleep at night um, we have two oxygens on the left so if we put a coefficient of two on the right that will balance off the oxygen but it doubles our magnesium so we'd want to follow that through with putting a two on the left to, as well to make sure every species in the equation is balanced because we're bringing two things together to make one, that is a synthesis reaction. We can see this happening with compounds as well. So elements is pretty straightforward, uh, but with compounds, we wanna be able to recognize at least two patterns that we see when you may go through synthesis reactions with compounds. Non-metal oxides, as the name would suggest, when you have a non-metal and an oxygen, um, you have a non-metal oxide. When they react with water, they will produce an acid. So look for non-metal oxides with water. And if so, basically what you want to do is you want to say, okay, I'm going to put the hydrogens out front. And I'm going to take my non-metal and I'm going to put all my oxygens together. And I'm going to write aqueous because that, that is going to be an acid. So non-metal oxides, when you put them into water, they make an acid. You want to make sure you get the right formula for that acid. But again, it's not too hard because it's a synthesis reaction. You're just putting them all together. And in order to get the formula looking nice for the metals, or sorry, for the acids, uh, make sure you put the hydrogens out front and then your leftover things that will make up your polyatomic ions um, after the hydrogens. And don't forget the aqueous to show that they are acids. Metal oxides, conveniently enough for us, um, again, as the name would suggest, they have a metal and an oxygen. Um, they will react with water to produce something basic, and you'll see it with the hydroxide. So easy to remember. Non-metal oxides make acids, metal oxides make bases. And so when they go through the synthesis reaction, just put the metal and then write OH afterwards and make sure you have done it in a way that gets everything to balance and you have your synthesis reaction with metal oxides. Decomposition reactions are the exact opposite. So you are taking something and you're splitting it apart. So if you took your sodium chloride and you broke it apart into sodium and chlorine gas, that would be a decomposition reaction. So let's say we had hydrogen peroxide and let's write that as a liquid. Um, probably more likely aqueous, but let's imagine it as a liquid. Um, it could go through a decomposition reaction and they're a little bit harder to tell because there's many ways you could break something up, right? You got a lot of entropy happening here. Um, and so since there's more ways it can be broken up, decomposition reactions can be trickier than synthesis reactions. Often you'll have to do a chemical to test to see what happens. But when you allow hydrogen peroxide to decompose, it produces a gas that will reignite a burning or, or a glowing splint. And so that tells you that one of the products it produces is oxygen gas. So oxygen gas is one product, 
and the other one is water, which is going to be liquid. So you can see that without having some additional information, it can be hard to predict the products of a decomposition reaction. Combustion reactions essentially mean that something's going to be reacting with oxygen. And so this could be a metal reaction with oxygen. That would technically be a combustion reaction, but more likely we'll see them with hydrocarbons. So for the combustion of hydrocarbons, there's two types that you want to be familiar with. There is complete combustion, where the hydrocarbon, whatever the formula is, it's going to have carbon and hydrogen. That's why it's called a hydrocarbon. Um, it's going to react with oxygen and you are going to get two products. You are going to get carbon dioxide and you're going to get water. So then it's just a matter of balancing the chemical equation, whatever the formula is. So this could be methane, let's say it's CH4, um, or I don't know, maybe it could be octane. Whatever the formula is for the hydrocarbon, when it goes through complete combustion, it is going to be reacting with oxygen and it will produce carbon dioxide and water. And then you just need to make sure you end up with a balanced chemical equation at the end of that. So this is, this is what you want to have happening in your furnace. Um, if, if you are burning methane, you want to make sure it burns completely. And the only exhausts are carbon dioxide and water. Nice blue flame given off when you have complete combustion of a hydrocarbon. Incomplete combustion will produce the carbon dioxide and water that you got before. So you, you still have the carbon dioxide and water. But what is new is that you will also get carbon monoxide, and that's the problem, um, and carbon. And so what you'll see with these ones is you get a orange flame, um, and that's actually the emission spectra that you're seeing for carbon there. Um, and it, it means you're producing carbon, which means you're producing carbon monoxide, much harder to detect. But if you don't have enough oxygen, if oxygen is limited, the incomplete combustion process can be again happening. You still get carbon dioxide and water, but you also get carbon and carbon monoxide. So we see that with soot, and that means that you're producing carbon monoxide, this odorless, tasteless, deadly gas. So definitely something you want to be having a detector in your house for.